Coming up tonight on America's Hope, a very important topic that you do not want to miss. How can you protect your child from online social media predators? Well, tonight we'll talk about the fact that CEOs of these social media giants faced a day of reckoning on Capitol Hill, being grilled by members of the Senate Judiciary Committee on how they can toughen the regulations against them to protect your child. That's next on America's Hope. Good evening, I'm Kelly Wright and this is America's Hope and we do hope that wherever you are that you're safe and well, taking care of yourself and your family because you matter. Speaking of what matters right now, your family and your children and your children's children. But social media is now being described as the wild, wild west, a vast wasteland of sexual predators, bullies and bad actors who are causing irreparable harm to American families. Young children and teenagers continue to be exposed to the harmful effects of social media's dark side. And because of that, children have been exposed to dangerous behaviors that can cause them to fall into poor mental health, like depression. Some have even committed suicide. And others, they have become ensnared in child sexual exploitation and human trafficking. Yes, we're talking about your children and the harm that they could potentially face through online predators, online behaviors, online drug trafficking, human trafficking, all on social media. So what do we do about it? How do you help your family to protect them? Well, earlier today, the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee grilled the CEOs of social media giants like Meta, TikTok, X, and other social media companies. Committee Chairman Senator Dick Durbin did not pull any punches in his description of the social media companies, stating this, quote, they're responsible for many of the dangers our children face online. And ranking minority member Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina likened it to a day of reckoning for social media giants. So tonight we're going to focus on this we're going to show you that there is hope for our children. And we're going to show you some excerpts of the heated exchanges between the senators and the CEOs. And then we'll also be talking to one of the leading child advocates in the country, Donna Rice Hughes. She will be here to explain the myriad of issues and challenges that everyday American families face in protecting our children from abuse and exploitation via these online platforms. Let's get started. So first, the hearing began with recorded testimony from the children and some parents and guardians who said they or their children were exploited on social media. Watch this. I was sexually exploited on Facebook. I was sexually exploited on Instagram. I was sexually exploited on X. This is my daughter, Olivia. This is our son, Matthew. Look at how beautiful Miriam is. My son, Riley, died from suicide after being sexually exploited on Facebook. The child that he gets exploited is never the same ever again. I reported this issue numerous times, and it took over a decade before anyone helped me. You might be able to tell that I am using a green screen. Why is that? In the internet world, um, my past abusers can contact me. Fans of my abuse material as a child can find me and contact me. As a 17-year-old child, I had to write a victim impact statement after being extorted for four consecutive years. While I was strong enough to resist sending him any more pictures, there were dozens more who were not. We got a phone call to find out that my son was in his room and was suicidal. He was only 13 years old at the time. Um, him and a friend had been exploited online and trafficked. And my son reached out to Twitter. Twitter, or now X, his response was, thank you for reaching out. We reviewed the content and it didn't find, we did not find a violation of our policies. So no action will be taken at this time. How many more kids like Matthew? Like Olivia. Like Riley. 
How many more kids will suffer and die because of social media? Big tech failed to protect my child from sexual exploitation. Big tech failed to protect me from online sexual exploitation. And um, we need Congress to do something for our children and protect them. It's not too late. It's not too late to do something about it. Very startling testimony right there from people who have been impacted in such a negative and adverse way on social media platforms. Now, during their opening statements today, the CEOs gave the assurance to the Senate Judiciary Committee that they will work with Congress on matters to protect children. Here's what some of them had to say. Every day, teens and young people do amazing things on our services. They use our apps to create new things, express themselves, explore the world around them, and feel more connected to the people they care about. Overall, teens tell us that this is a positive part of their lives, but some face challenges online, so we work hard to provide parents and teens support and controls to reduce potential harms. Being a parent is one of the hardest jobs in the world. Technology gives us new ways to communicate with our kids and feel connected to their lives, but it can also make parenting more complicated. Now, although the average age on TikTok in the US is over 30, we recognize that special safeguards are required to protect minors and especially when it comes to combating all forms of CSAM. As a father of three young children myself, I know that the issues that we're discussing today are horrific and the nightmare of every parent. I am proud of our efforts to address the threats to young people online, from a commitment to protecting them, to our industry-leading policies, use of innovative technology, and significant ongoing investments in trust and safety to achieve this goal. Today's hearing is titled A Crisis, which calls for immediate action. As a mother, this is personal, and I share the sense of urgency. X is an entirely new company, an indispensable platform for the world and for democracy. You have my personal commitment that X will be active and a part of this solution. And just a few of the CEOs right there talking about the fact that they will work with Congress. But the Senate committee, well, they weren't satisfied with what they heard. The senators wanted something more than just platitudes uh, from the tech CEOs. They wanted to hear from them to actually make a commitment to accountability, responsibility, and to making their platforms more safe for children and for families. Watch these exchanges and some statements from the senators who, by the way, are taking a bipartisan stand. They found common ground for the common good of protecting American families and protecting our children. All of them agree that enough is enough. Watch this with Senator Durbin and then Senator Lindsey Graham and more. But let me get down to the bottom line here. I'm going to focus on my legislation on CSAM. What it says is civil liability if you intentionally or knowingly host or store child sexual abuse materials or make child sex abuse materials available. Secondly, intentionally or knowingly promote or aid and abet a violation of child sexual exploitation laws. Is there anyone here who believes you should not be held civilly liable for that type of conduct? Mr. Citron? Um, good morning, Chair. Um, you know, we very much believe that this content is disgusting and that um, there are many things about the Stop CSAM bill that I think are very encouraging and we very much um, support adding more resources for the cyber tip line and, and modernizing that along with um, giving more resources to NECMEC. Um, and um, we're, I'd be very uh, uh, um, open to having conversations with you and your team to talk through the details of the bill some more. The representative from South Carolina, Mr. Guffey's son, uh, got caught up in a sex extortion ring in Nigeria using Instagram. And he was... Um, shaken down, paid money, that wasn't enough, and he killed himself uh, using Instagram. What would you like to say to him? It's terrible. I mean, 
no one should have to go through something like that. You think he should be allowed to see you? Um, I, I think that they can sue us. Well, I think he should, and he can't. So uh, the bottom line here, folks, is that this committee is done with talking. We passed five bills unanimously that in their different ways. And look at who did this. Graham Blumenthal, Durbin Hawley, Klobuchar Cornyn, Cornyn Klobuchar, Blackburn and Ossoff. I mean, we've found common ground here that just is astonishing. And we've had hearing after hearing, Mr. Chairman. And the bottom line is, I've come to conclude, uh, gentlemen, that you're not going to support any of this. Linda, um, how do you say your last name? Yacarino. Uh, do you support the Earn It Act? Uh, we strongly support the collaboration to raise industry no, practices no, 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 to no. Do you support prevent the Earn It CSAM. Act? Do you support the Earn It Act? In, in English, do you support the Earn It Act? Yes or no? We don't need double speed. We look here. forward to supporting and continue our conversations. Okay, so I think as that you can is see, no. but you have, but you have, you have taken the reason the Earn It Act is important. You can actually lose your liability protections when children are exploited and you didn't use best business practices. See, the Earn It Act means you have to earn liability protection. You're given it no matter what you do. So, to the members of this committee. It is now time to make sure that the people who are holding up the signs can sue on behalf of their loved ones. Nothing will change until the courtroom door is open to victims of social media. Uh, for too long, uh, we have been seeing the social media companies turn a blind eye uh, when kids have joined these platforms in record numbers. They have used algorithms that push harmful content because that content got popular. They provided a venue, maybe not knowingly at first, but for dealers to sell deadly drugs like fentanyl. Our own head of our Drug Enforcement Administration has said they've basically um, been captured by the cartels in Mexico and in China. So I strongly support, first of all, the Stop CSAM bill. I agree with Senator Graham that nothing is going to change unless we open up the courtroom doors. I think the time for all of this immunity is done because I think money talks even stronger than we talk up here. Two of the five bills as noted are my bills with Senator Cornyn. One has actually passed through the Senate but is waiting action in the House. Uh, but the other one is the SHIELD Act, and I do support, uh, appreciate the support of X of that bill. This is about revenge porn. Uh, the FBI director testified before this committee. There's been over 20 suicides of kids attributed to online revenge porn in just uh, the last year. But for those parents out there and those families, this is for them about their own child but it's also about making sure this doesn't happen to other children. I know because I've talked to these parents, parents like Bridget Noring from Hastings, Minnesota, who is out there today. Bridget lost her teenage son after he took a fentanyl lace pill that he purchased on the internet. Amy Neville is also here. Platform got the pill. Amy Neville is also here. Her son, Alexander, was only 14 when he died after taking a pill he didn't know was actually fentanyl. We're starting a law enforcement campaign, One Pill Kills in Minnesota, going to the schools with the sheriffs and law enforcement. But the way to stop it is yes, at the border and at the points of entry, but we know that 30%, some of the people that are getting the fentanyl are getting it off the platforms. Meanwhile, social media platforms generated $11 billion in revenue in 2022 from advertising directed at children and teenagers, including nearly $2 billion in ad profits derived from users age 12 and under. When a Boeing plane lost a door in mid-flight several weeks ago, nobody questioned the decision to ground a fleet 
of over 700 planes. So why aren't we taking the same type of decisive action on the danger of these platforms when we know these kids are dying? So as you can see, every member of the Senate Judiciary Committee made their points today, but some defining moments also stood out. For example, watch Senator Josh Hawley in this exchange with Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Would you like to apologize for what you've done to these good people? why we invested so much and are going to continue doing these streaming efforts to, uh, to make sure that no one has to go through the types of things that your families have had to suffer. You know, why, Mr. Zuckerberg, why should your company not be sued for this? It's quite a moment today in the gallery of the Senate Judiciary Committee to see Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company known as Meta. Many of you recall that it's also called Facebook and then there's Instagram. But he did turn to apologize. And beyond that, he had some more difficulties with some of the senators as the day went on. But Senator Josh Hawley wasn't through with some of the CEOs. Because beyond his exchange with Zuckerberg, Senator Hawley grilled TikTok CEO Shua Chu on how TikTok conducts its business. Watch this. Mr. Chu, let me just ask you, your platform, why should your platform not be banned in the United States of America? You are owned by a Chinese communist company or a company based in China, the editor-in-chief of your parent company is a Communist Party secretary. Your company has been surveilling Americans for years. According to leaked audio from more than 80 internal TikTok meetings, China-based employees of your company have repeatedly accessed non-public data of United States citizens. Your company has tracked journalists improperly gaining access to their IP addresses, user data in an attempt to identify whether they're writing negative stories about you. Why should, your, your platform is basically an espionage arm for the Chinese Communist Party. Why should you not be banned in the United States of America? Senator, I disagree with your characterization. Many of what you have said, we have explained in a lot of detail. TikTok is, is used by 170 million Americans. I know, and every single love. one of those Americans are in danger from the fact that you track their keystrokes, you track their app usage, you track their location data, and we know that all of that information can be accessed by Chinese employees who are subject to the diktats of the Chinese Communist Party. That, that why, not, why should you not be banned in this, in this country? Uh, Senator, that is not accurate. A, a lot of what you describe we collect, we don't. And it is 100 percent accurate. Do you deny that repeatedly Americans' data has been accessed by ByteDance employees in China? We built a project that you know, cost us billions of dollars to stop that, and we have made a lot of progress. And it I hasn't think. been stopped. According to the Wall Street Journal report from just yesterday, even now, ByteDance workers, without going through official channels, have access to the private information of American citizens. I'm quoting from the article. Private information of American citizens, including their birth date, their IP address, and more. That's now. Senator, as we know, the media doesn't always get it right. What, what we have... What we have uh, but the Chinese what, Communist Party does? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we have, been, we have spent billions of dollars to build this project. It's rigorous, it's robust, it's unprecedented, and I'm proud of the work that the 2,000 employees are doing to protect the data. It's, of but it's not, it's not protected. That's the problem, Mr. Chu. It's not protected at all. It's subject to Communist Chinese Party inspection and review. Your app, unlike anybody else sitting here, and, and heaven knows I've got problems with everybody here, but your app, unlike any of those, is subject to the control and inspection of a foreign hostile government that has actively trying to track the information of whereabouts of every American that they get their hands on. Your app ought to be banned in the United States of America for the security of this country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And so the bottom line is this. The Senate Judiciary Committee wants to impose tougher regulations on the social media giants. Plus, when families are losing their children due to the influence of social media, the senators also believe that these companies 
should not be covered by any immunity whatsoever, they are now pushing for these tech giants to be liable to lawsuits by injured parties, such as parents of the children who have died by suicide, fentanyl, or other troubles caused by social media influence. And so here we are. Joining me now is Terry Austin. She is an attorney and legal analyst who has appeared on a number of networks, including ABC News, CBS News, Inside Edition, Law and Crime, and Court TV. And I want to point out that previously she served as an adjunct professor at the University of Southern California Annenberg School of Journalism. And prior to that, she served as Chief Corporate Policy Officer for SB Global, where she was responsible for implementing and monitoring corporate policy standards and procedures to ensure compliance with the highest industry standards. And Terry, first of all, welcome to the program. I brought that up because you know what companies have to do to uphold highest industry standards. What is going on with the CEOs of social media companies that every year they come before the Senate or the House and they get grilled for things that they have failed to do in upholding the highest industry standards? Well, you said it right, Kelly. Thank you for having me. There is so much that we can do as far as these tech companies are concerned. And every year they do come before the Senate and they are grilled and they promise that they are going to self-impose standards. And we still have not seen that being done by these companies. And we are seeing results that are adverse to our children. And the whole purpose of the hearing today was to deal with these exploitation of children and how can we stop that from happening? And you heard Senator Graham talk about, you know, these Senate bills that have passed the committee but have not yet gotten out of committee or passed as far as law is concerned. So you're asking what can be done. That's the first thing that can be done. They need to have legislation that is passed that is going to deal with, you know, bullying online that's going to deal with privacy as far as children are concerned. There's so much that they can do in terms of looking at and monitoring all of these platforms and taking down what's not appropriate or having it not be put up on the platform in the first place. So I think there's a lot of work to be done. There are other things other than legislation. The courts are already dealing with these issues. The problem is and you heard Lindsey Graham talking about this today, there is what's called Section 230, which protects these tech companies. And it's part of Title 47, and it says that they cannot be sued for the content. I think in addition to the legislation that the Senate is talking about passing, if they in fact repeal Section 230, I think the courts going to take this into their own hands and make these companies responsible and accountable for what goes up on their platform. So legislation, court activity, hopefully that will bring industry standards up to speed. And one more thing I'll add as far as what can be done legally. There was conversation today about developing an agency that would oversee these tech companies and they would have broad sort of you know mandates to work with these tech companies and to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do versus some of these various agencies like sec or fcc and different other agencies dealing with tech companies having one agency who would monitor them and would impose fines and penalties if in fact they don't live up to the standards and that's something that even zuckerberg himself said that he would support so there's a lot that can be done beyond these annual hearings and hopefully today's hearing will change some of that what are you saying to other parents out there about how they have to take responsibility and accountability themselves to take care of their child you know, it does take a village. There's no question about it. I think each and every one of us has to look at this issue and determine what can we do to make it better for our children. Whether or not you make sure that what they're looking at online is something that's appropriate for their age, 
I've actually seen, Kelly, many parents who are saying, I'm not going to give you a phone or I'm not going to have you on a computer doing anything other than what you should be doing as far as homework is concerned. Terry Austin, attorney, scholar, and a mom. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Appreciate you being Thank on the you, program. Kelly. Thank you so much. Of Coming course. up next, we're going to talk to a child advocate who's been out there uh, trying to help uh, children, help parents. Her name is Donna Rice Hughes. That's next on America's Hope. Well, here to discuss this important matter and a lot more is Donna Rice Hughes. Now, we interviewed her earlier to talk about what's coming up because she's there. She's been at the hearing. And Donna is the CEO of Enough is Enough, national nonpartisan secular nonprofit organization that has pioneered and has been involved in leading the campaign in the fight, I should say, since 1994 to make the Internet safer for our children. So what's happening in terms of the misinformation and disinformation that's affecting our teenagers and even our children on social media? Well, thank you, Kelly. It's so great to be with you. This is a big week in Washington, and I can tell you that right now. And the Senate hearing is one of many um, uh, following the heels of a number of Senate hearings that have already taken place last year and years before. So I have to tell you that at 30 uh, years in the battle, it's a war, it's a marathon. Um, we've won some battles and we've lost some battles, but to see this Senate work together across the aisle consistently is very heartening to me and to all the advocates and I hope to families across the country because we've got three branches of government and we've got an unwieldy internet we've got a lot of crime out there and a big crime is actually preying on our kids child pornography is a multi-billion dollar industry sex trafficking America is top in the world Obviously, that is a criminal enterprise. Hardcore pornography, multi-billion dollars, and yet our country leads in these areas. And where's all this taking place? Primarily online. And where are predators praying? Online. Where are kids playing? Online. So this is, this is what is happening. So kids are at risk, and there is serious risk. And so finally here, um, Congress is saying, look, enough is enough. You've had 30 years to self-regulate and you haven't done enough. And we have known, Kelly, since the beginning, really, of, of the launch of the Internet in the 90s, when I got started, that it often takes, you can try the carrot approach, but it often takes regulation to really get their attention. And that's what's been happening. And we've seen a lot of change in social media companies. They're starting to move in the right direction, but there's more that they need to be doing. What about the CEOs? Do they understand how children can be led down the wrong path and be preyed upon by predators who will use social media to uh, get into the minds of the children? Well, that's a great question. And I do not know these CEOs, so I don't know what's in their head. But I do know that many years ago, um, there was a report that came out that, that talked about some of the top CEOs weren't even letting their kids on social media platforms. So, you know, kind of sounds familiar, like China puts out TikTok, but they've got a different TikTok than we have here. So I think that, that they've got to know, but um, business practices have been uh, basically putting profits over safety. And what advocates like Enough is Enough have been saying for years is that doesn't work anymore. It never did work, but now this is pandemic. Okay, let me just give you some, some numbers, if you don't mind, Kelly. Please, no, um, please. Bark, Bark who is a, a wonderful company, uh, they actually looked at 5.6 billion activities on social media. They found that self-harm kids, tweens, 33% of tweens, were being exposed to self-harm content, 57% of teens. Sexual content, 58% of tweens were being exposed to sexual content, teens 75. Bullying, 67% of tweens, teens 76%. Now that's just on social media sites. Let me just give you a bigger picture than that. 
we are in, as I mentioned, a pandemic of child sexual exploitation material. We used to call that child pornography. In 20, 2022, there were 88 million reports of content. 88 million, Donna? 88 million reported to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Now, in those reports, there are hundreds and thousands of videos, okay? So it's an enormous amount, largest ever in history. So this, this isn't just teens. I mean, the, the child sex abuse goes down to kids as young as infants and toddlers. In fact, 68% of these images and videos, kids were under the age of eight years old. Here's another stat. 55% of youth are meeting their traffickers online, right? 40% of kids are talking to strangers online and giving them personal information. Sextortion has become a huge issue where kids are taking nudes of themselves, videos of themselves in sexually explicit situations and putting them online. That gets into the hands of a tra predator or a trafficker or an extorter. And all of a sudden now you've got sextortion. Suicide rates have gone up. 50% of kids are seeing violent pornography, hardcore pornography, which is illegal in this country under federal obscenity laws. That's most of what's out there. 50%, 58% of youth consumers are under the age of 14. And I'm talking some foul stuff here, Kelly. I mean, this is rape, torture, um, br brutality. All right. This isn't, you know, the pornography of Playboy. 20 years ago. I mean, this is a whole different ball game out there. So this is what's this is what's out there and this is what's online. And so the internet started really as the wild, wild west with no regulation. And it is out of control. It's been out of control. And now it's gonna take an act of Congress, many acts of Congress to rein it back in. Hence our our uh, slogan, rein in big tech. You know, it's staggering what you're talking about. Uh, and it's really atrocious and it's outrageous. We can, I mean, you can give so many adjectives to this, but the bottom line is, based on what you're telling us, our children, our country's future are in trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to take a break so that people can digest this. And when we come back, Donna, on the other side of the break, I'd like you to talk to me about some possible solutions to prevent this kind of atrocity from happening to our children. Welcome back to America's Hope. I'm talking to Donna Rice Hughes. And if there's anyone in this country who is a champion for uh, our children, it would be Donna Rice Hughes. Uh, look, you saw this coming uh, long before even members of Congress saw, and I would dare say even before the CEOs of these tech giants uh, saw it coming. Uh, and you took steps to try to develop preventative efforts to keep children safe online. And you're mm -hmm. still doing that today. I, I, look, I don't know you personally, Donna, but I, I think that because you're a champion of, of trying to help children, you would have hoped that people would have joined on with you so that all of you could work your way out of a job and say, hey, everything's okay for our children in America now. But it hasn't happened, why? No, it hasn't. And, and that's a great point um, for a number of reasons. If, if you look at how to, to make the Internet safer for children, we proposed back in the 90s and we're still working off this model today. That is, it takes a shared responsibility, everybody doing their part. OK, so parents have got to be educated, equipped and empowered. But all of the burden pretty much has fallen on them most of this time. So we do a lot of work there I and mean, we talk about what parents need to know and what they, they can do it, it as we get towards the end of this interview. But the other is corporate responsibility and accountability. As I talked about in the beginning, the internet started as anything goes, completely open, all right? And even though Congress passed laws in the early 90s, I was part of all of this, most of them, in fact, all but one was struck down at the Supreme Court. The internet was so new. We were trying to extend laws that protected children from all the stuff we've been talking about to the internet, okay? So a lot, Congress took action, but the Supreme Court didn't uphold some of these laws. I think by and large, they didn't really un understand it that much at the time. Then social media comes into this, okay? So all this time, the, these businesses and these companies have developed their technologies as, as the internet has evolved, and but have not factored in safety as a driver, 
All right, we call that safe, safety by design or safer by design. So now they're having to pull it all back. You know, after you've already invented the wheel, how do we make the wheel safe, so to speak? Which is kind of hard. And, and that's what we're dealing with right now. So I, I've got to ask you, have any of these corporations, knowing that you're out there on the front lines, have any of them come to you for advice or, or even consultation uh, about how they can regulate themselves and better safeguard our children. Since, as you've mentioned, and rightly so, some of the CEOs of, this, of these companies will never let their children touch social media until they're 18 years old, a few of them have reported. Right. Um, well, over the years, we have worked with some of the tech companies. And let me just say this, Enough is Enough has been joined. When we started, there were two NGOs. Now there are hundreds, hundreds of NGOs. Why? Because you've got this, this pandemic of problems from, like I said, child pornography to pornography to bullying. Huge issue is bullying and, and all of this. So there are a lot of groups out there and we're constantly talking to these big companies. I will tell you, I have been in conversations with Meta. They just sent me a whole list of all the things that they've just done, which is all good. They're all steps in the right direction, right? But so if one company or a handful of them do that start to do the right thing, it doesn't mean they all will. This is why this industry-wide regulation needs to happen. I, I, want, I want to take a break. When we come back, I want to talk to you about the, the family, the parental responsibilities that must be applied mm -hmm. and the parental um, uh, involvement that should be applied and what teenagers can do to help other teenagers. Yeah. Welcome back to America. So we've been talking to Donna Rice Hughes about what's happening with our children and what we can do to safeguard our children. And so one of the, the last areas that, and probably the most important area is what's going on inside the home, Donna. Uh, therefore, mm -hmm. what should a parent be looking out for? What should a parent's responsibility be to their teenager, their tween, their young child, who in some mm -hmm. way is getting onto social media and being exposed to all of these potential mm -hmm. hazards that could take place. That's right. Well, we always say here at Enough is Enough that a, the parent is the first line of defense. I would say you're the first line and the last line because there, there's, like I said, there's a lot of broken gaps in all of this with law enforcement, uh, not always enforcing all the laws. We need new laws. We're trying to get these laws passed. Corporate responsibility, you know, so uh, there's breakdown all over here. And so parents, it, recognizing you're the first line of defense and that your child is not immune. That's another very important point. I talk mm. to parents all the time yeah. and they just think, well, okay, I've got the computer here and I'm checking what they're doing and I have some parental controls turned on and all these other things, but it's not enough, right? So every single device, this is our advice, every single device your kid uses, it's important that you become a very active cyber parent and, and parenting the use of that device. That goes also for every single social media app you let them download. Now that's one of the things we're asking these companies to do is to have parental um, verification, parental approval before a kid can even download an app. Okay, but right now that's not in place. All right, so if parents can just start with that and think, okay, little Johnny wants a gaming device. Am I going to be willing to um, be a good cyber parent on the use of that device? And that means go look at all the games, play with them, set all the parental controls on, make sure they're not talking to strangers online, all the different things that we, we instruct parents to do, then consider not letting them have that gaming device. Same with a smartphone. So this is really, really important. The other, the other thing with kids, especially when you start letting them play with these devices early on in life, they start to think it, it, it's a toy and yeah. it's not. Teaching them this is yes. not a toy. This is opening you up to all the good and all the bad and all the dangerous people. And as a parent, it is my job to make sure that you're safe. That means my rules 
Good advice. <laughs> Good advice, <laughs> mom. <laughs> Thank you. I've got five grandkids now. Um, and so there you so go. So look, let me, let but, me ask uh, you, because I, I know we were making, or we're not making light of it, but we do know that some of the new parenting skills, uh, I just want to be a friend to my teenager. Well, you know, mm -hmm. friendship is all well and good, but that's your child. And mm -hmm. you still have to remain a parent to your child, to your son, to your daughter. Uh, and, and when they get a, a certain age, then you can see that friendship grow. But isn't it true that if you're the kind of parent who's doing the right thing for your children, at some point, the greatest reward is when that child is now successful mm -hmm. uh, and looks mm -hmm. at you and says, thank you. Thank oh, you. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. I work with a lot of young people who grew up in the internet age and they say, oh, my parents didn't let me do this and this and this, and I'm so thankful now. And so it's now, it's hard to be a parent of a preteen and a teen. Yeah. It's just hard. And it's hard with all this stuff out there because they think it's a rite of passage. And so, and then you've got the peer pressure that comes with it. But but if, if teens are now telling us, I mean, they're they're confessing, you know, I'm getting depressed using this and comparing myself with this other girl or that girl, or I don't look like this or this, that, and the other. And, and, and so they're realizing that, that, that there's some issues here that are involved, but I, I want to also just get to, besides keeping lines of communication and building that trust, it's so important that parents use the tools that they do have. And right now, what we recommend on every device, on every social media platform, if you can, if they even have the, the parental control tools, turn everything on, turn on the privacy settings to the most strict you can get, turn on the filters, filters work, filters will help um, keep some of the hardcore material and the CSTAM and stuff from coming through. One of the things that, 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 that the hearing um, is going to show, or I'm going to say, okay, did show, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I screwed that up, but anyway, you know what I mean, um, is... Um, how what technologies can these companies put into place to detect grooming that is happening on their platforms mm -hmm. all right we've got ai now that is gonna just blow everything i've just talked about out of the water so we have got to get all this put together now and fixed because ai is just changing the whole landscape one more time Look, in, and, in and let's be clear, uh, I'm glad uh, I was going to ask you about AI, artificial artificial intelligence, because we've seen what it's done. And uh, a lot of Swifty fans, fans of Taylor Swift, have seen what AI has done to mm -hmm. her. Uh, 45 mm -hmm. million uh, views of her, and it wasn't mm -hmm. her, uh, in right. very compromising positions. And it took, it was up for uh, enough to reach 45 million people before people began to challenge it and actually uh, talk out uh, against that. So that's another thing that parents have to be concerned about, artificial intelligence, but our teenagers yeah. have to be aware of it too. How do we make them ready? Well, I think using things like what happened to Taylor Swift is good because it's always good to use what's in the news and say, look, this happened to this popular rock, rock star and she's got a big following. She's able to take this down. This is happening to kids all the time. We call this deep fakes, right? Where, um, and, and it's also happening in the area of child sex abuse material, right? Where, where child pornography is being created and it's not real. And there's more legislation yeah. now to, to, to try to deal with that. So, um, so kids can do a lot. And I think if um, in teens and tweens, especially when they see something happening, to a friend to step in and be an upstander. We say be an upstander, not a bystander. Um, don't allow this stuff. And, and one of the most important things is not to put personal information out there about yourself or anything that's provocative and certainly not the sexting images. But now, even if you don't do that, somebody can take your face and put it on the body of a porn star and now you've got a deep fake. So it's just, it's just really out of hand. And I just would say to parents, um, it's talk to your kids about it. A uh, final question is, uh, what is your hope for America? Oh my goodness. <laughs> my hope for America is that we would return to the foundations that this country was built on. And that is one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We need that. We're so divided. We've got to come together 
and work together and just love each other. Hmm. Couldn't say it better. I agree with you 100%. Donna Rice Hughes, thank you. Thank you. Back with more in just a moment. My final word for tonight, when you look at what happened today in terms of the social media CEOs facing a grilling on Capitol Hill by the Senate Judiciary Committee, let us not forget the fact that children have died because of the influences by social media. So the question that remains is, what are we as parents going to do about it? Government can do one thing, but the bottom line is government can't do everything. So it's up to us as moms, as dads, as grandparents, as great grandparents to reach out and make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect our children from the vicious predators that are out there to take them away from us. Remember, you matter. You matter to your family and your family needs you more now than ever. And so America, don't let hope be extinguished. Stand up and fight for your right to protect your child. Until next time.